So to solve this problem, the first thing we need to do is to figure out the price of the bond. First thing we do is we draw that timeline. So the bond pays a 3% coupon with semi-annual coupons. This means that each coupon payment will be $1.50. And then at the two-year mark, there will be the principal repayment plus that final coupon payment of $1.50. To figure out the price, it's pretty straightforward. We take the uh, APRs from the STRIPS uh, term structure of interest rates, and we discount each cash flow by the associated STRIPS interest rate. So for the first cash flow that happens in six months of $1.50, we discount it by 2% divided by 2 and technically raised to the first. That second cash flow of $1.50, we discount it by the one year strips APR divided by two because they're semi-annual coupon payments, even though there's no real coupon. And then we raise it to the second. And then we do this for the coupon payment at year and a half and at the two year mark. We raise that to the third because there's three six month periods until that coupon payment. So when we plug that all into the calculator, we get a price of the bond of So standing here today at time equals zero, we get or we would see that the bond is priced at $87.74. The next part of the question is to figure out the yield to maturity. So this we need our financial calculator. So to figure out the yield to maturity, we plug in n equals four, because there's four coupon payments. The payment is $1.50. The present value is the negative of the price we just found. The future value is that face value of $100. We hit that I over YR button. And if you remember, my calculator set up into one payment per year. And so my calculator spits out 4.95%. Yield to maturity is quoted on an annual basis. And this 4.95% is for six month periods. So the actual yield to maturity is two times this 4.95 or 9.9%. Now the next part of the problem is a little bit more difficult. We want to find what the price of the bond is in six months. Need a little bit more space for this, so I'm gonna create a new sheet. Okay, so now that I have a new sheet, I'm gonna redraw that timeline. So with this timeline, we need to find out what the forward rates are because the forward rates are what the, the term structure of interest rates are going to be in six months. So we're trying to find the forward rate for this period, for this period, and for this period. For, for clarity, I'm gonna call this 
um, period A, period B, period C, and period D. So to find the forward rate, For period B, we first find the effective return for the one-year bond. So this is 1 plus the 0 0.06 divided by 2 squared. And then we know that has to be equal to the six-month bond plus whatever the forward rate is going to be in six months, or what we expect the interest rate on a six-month bond to be in six months is. So that's going to be So now we just solve for F11, that forward rate corresponding to the B period. We find F11 equals 5.04%. We do the same thing for period C and period D. So for period C, it's 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 2 to the third, because there's three six-month periods in a year and a half. And that's the effective return on that one-year bond. And that will be the six-month rate starting in two periods, uh, i.e. one year. For period D, we do the same thing. Okay, so now here's where it gets a little bit complicated. What we need to do is we need to figure out what the price of the bond will be in six months. This is to figure out what the holding period is, or holding period return is over six months. So to find out the price of the bond six months later, so this is going to be six months later. We need to discount the cash flows of the bond pretending that we're standing six months later at that point right there. So the new timeline six months later is going to look like this. Now, importantly, this period right here, that's going to be period B in our previous timeline. That period is going to be period C in our previous timeline, and that period is D. The reason this matters is because under expectations theory, what we calculated as the forward rates corresponding to period B, C, and D, um, they'll be the actual interest rates for period B, C, and D in six months. That's what we expect, and that's what we're operating under uh, through expectations theory. So the price of the bond in six months is going to be those discounted cash flows. So in six months, we'll receive this cash flow right there, and we discount that at the forward rate for period B.
Now it's a little bit tricky here. To get the cash flow, um, or to get the, the present value of this cash flow right here, we need to discount it back all the way to where we're standing today. So we need to discount it first back over period C, and then back again to period, well, to zero um, over period B. So we first discount that back at the 6.03% that we found. And that discounts it back to, that's right here. And then we need to discount it back one more year, or one more period, and that's period B. So that, this quantity right here, that's the, this dollar fifty discounted back over period C and over period B. There's one more cash flow and that's that terminal cash flow right there. So we need to discount that back to today. And so we need to discount it back over period D, over period C, and over period B. So we do a very similar procedure and we discount it back first by that forward rate during period D. Then we discount it back over period C and then over period B. Once we disc or plug all this stuff in our calculator, we find out the price of the bond is $87.12. So we would expect the bond to be worth $87.12 six months from today. So the holding period return over six months Just erase that. Is going to be the price of the bond in six months. So that 8712 we just figured out. Minus the price of the bond when we bought it, which was $87.74. We figured that out at the very beginning plus an intermediate cash flow of $1.50. That's the cash flow we received at that six month mark divided by what we paid for the bond. And we get a holding period return of about 1%.